So, what are you doing there, Matthew? I'm about to surf the web, Grandpa. Well, cowabunga. <laughs> yeah, see, Grandpa, you can find anything you want on the Internet. Say you want to find out the weather in Detroit. Uncle Melvin lives in Detroit. I hope it's cold. <laughs> What's the dilly deal? Hey. <laughs> Matthew's trying to launch me into cyberspace. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Grandpa, the first thing you do is log on. Now, see, you don't have to log on to open a newspaper. All you got to do is take off the rubber band. <laughs> now, there's a brilliant invention, the rubber band. Change the world. Also good for holding up a man's socks. Uh, so, uh, hold on. You, you're trying to get today's weather today? Don't use that browser. Excuse me. See, do be do bow. Why don't you use a search engine? It's way quicker. Give it up, put it up, bow. <laughs> no, see, you're living in the dark ages, my brother. Watch and learn. Sada to be to say bow. Let's wait for it. Thirty degrees in Detroit with a chance of flurry. Skill you do wop bow. What do you think? It's good, right? I mean, it's really good. Yes, it's good. In fact, it's so good, I like to actually read it. <laughs> Sorry. Isn't it amazing that this woman has not been published? I mean, her writing just jumps off the page. What are you looking at? Read. It's so exciting to <laughs> discover a writer who can create a heroine as, as inspiring and as fearless as Wahuntra Valor, the first Maasai princess to lead her people into battle. She had to be fearless with a name like Wahuntra. <laughs> she probably got the crap beat out of her every day at recess. <laughs> so, did you get to the part yet where Wahuntra diverts the elephant stampede and saves the people? Oh, thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> hey, guys, check this out. And I mean, check. This out. $500. All right. We just came back from the bank. Cashed in a bond I bought for him on his second birthday. I remember I was on my way to buy when I spotted this beautiful South Bend rod and reel. If I didn't think you were so cute, you'd be holding a 10-year-old fishing pole right now. <laughs> so, Money, what you gonna do with all this loose change? Well, I've been studying stocks in school, so I think I'm going to invest it in the market. Very wise, wise. A little risky, but one must risk to achieve greatness. Just like when Wahuntra Valor put all her faith in the sacred staff and in the end emerged victorious. Although, sadly blind. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> hey, Ben, I left that tape of the Bulls game in the kitchen. Ooh, great. Hey, by the way, they lost in overtime. Oh! <laughs> Tony, what you have written is so riveting, so so vivid. I, I felt like I was right there on the Serengeti with Wahanthra. Mm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Are you gonna eat your roll? It's yours. Uh, Tony's a little distracted. Uh-huh. Yes, I'm also a little hungry. <laughs> you know, I, I, I came in with a hat. <laughs> you have quite an appetite. Where do you put it all? On me. <laughs> <laughs> So, Tony, I am fascinated by the name Wahuntra. Where does it come from? Joyce, I'm going to let you answer that. Actually, it's a rather common Maasai name it, in this country. Its equivalent would be um, Stacy with an I. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tony, what can I tell you about Home Court Press to impress you? Oh, you can tell her how much money you're going to pay her. <laughs> oh, well, you're very direct for an agent. I like that. And you're very evasive. See, there's that direct thing I like again. <laughs> you know, we could do this all day. Well, I'm a seasoned professional. Can you handle it? Hey, you play up to the level of your opponent. <laughs> ben, our terms are very simple. Big, juicy advance. No book tour. What? Why? Well, Tony's not comfortable talking about herself. She doesn't want to make any personal appearances. Right, Tony? Right. 
Yes, but you're the exact kind of person people want to see. You're smart, you're beautiful, you're the very embodiment of Wahuntra. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tony, the most effective way to sell this book is for you to go on a cross-country tour. From Larry King to Leno, from the L.A. beaches to the Gulf Stream waters, from the Purple Mountain Majesty to the Amber Waves of Grain. <laughs> That's very catchy. You want to write that down? I'm sure we'll remember it. You know what I hate most about being a publisher? All the reading? This incredible piece of prose lands in your lap, and then you meet the author, and they never live up to your expectations. Go do what I do. Lower your expectations. <laughs> I mean, uh, when I read the book, I felt so connected to her. And then today, nothing. Well, I liked her. I was so she wasn't very articulate for a writer. I find that refreshing. <laughs> you know who was refreshing and fun and intriguing? Joyce. Joyce, yes. Hey. Joyce. Who's Joyce? <laughs> Tony's agent. Oh, wash out your mouth. What? I can't be attracted to her just because she doesn't conform to the typical standards of beauty? No, because she's an agent. <laughs> now, Tony. <laughs> ah, 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 you remember our rule? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no dating from the author pool, or mm -hmm. the secretarial pool, or the car pool. My world is getting very small, Ben. Where is this global village they keep promising me? <laughs> Excuse me. Can you tell me where I can find the publishers of the new bestseller, Wahantra Valor? Yeah, try Random House. They get all the big names. <laughs> well, I guess I blew it then. We're giving you the book. Yes! <laughs> I believe this calls for champagne. I happen to have a bottle in my trunk that I keep for just such an occasion. Or if I get a flat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. We're so excited. Uh, uh, we'll have to set up some time with Tony to start editing the book. What kind of edits? Oh, because maybe I should just take your suggestions and give them to her myself. She's, she's kind of sensitive. Oh, yeah, well, you know her best. Uh, it's just that I don't know how she's going to react to cutting the part where her parents are killed by a band of marauding jackals. I mean, please, jackals is so cliché. <laughs> cliché? Yeah, it's got to go. You're talking about the moment where she crosses the threshold from schoolgirl to warrior princess. Do you have any idea how long Tony agonized over each and every word? Why don't you just cut out her liver? Why don't you just hop up on the table and I'll grab my scalpel? <laughs> Tony? Hi, Tony Worthington. <laughs> Ben Stevenson, so nice to finally meet you. You've told me so much about you. <laughs> Tony, I don't get it. You're a brilliant author. Why would you lie to us? Hey, you yourself said people want to see the beautiful woman who wrote this book. Yeah, yeah, and I would have said the same thing to you. Ben, let's be honest. Do I look like I embody Wahuntra Valor? It was as if she was formed from a single ray of light. Her eyes reflected an inner strength. Her smile was a crescent moon. Yeah, yeah, I would say you do. And you want to edit me? <laughs> Didn't I tell you Tony was great? Oh, yeah, she's something, Ben. Nothing would make me happier than writing up these contracts for you. Yes, except maybe charging me your usual exorbitant fee. Oh, well, that does bring a smile to my face. <laughs> you know, I meant to ask Tony how she came up with that part where Wahuntra escapes the burning pit using the skeleton of a musk ox. Beautiful. <laughs> there was a girl in my neighborhood named Wahuntra. Everybody called her Stacy. <laughs> Hey, guys, guess what? My stock just went up four points. Hey, congratulations, my capitalist brother. Mm. What did you end up investing in? Spartacus Athletic Shoes. Your dad opened an account for me on the computer. Hey, I just bought a pair of those shoes. And we appreciate your business, Uncle Carl. <laughs> dad, I made 50 bucks, and I didn't even have to do anything. Wow, 50 bucks? Yeah. That's five weeks allowance I don't have to give you. <laughs> Good one, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Uncle Carl, you want to make some serious cash? Oh, yeah. Check out Candy Eyeballs. What? Oh, yeah, these things are the bomb at school. Everybody's buying these things. I'm going to sink all my money into the company that makes these. Wait, wait, wait. You're going to put all your money into this? Sounds pretty risky, Maddie. 
That money's worked for you a long time. Shame to gamble it away. Oh, come on, Grandpa. $500 is chump change next to what I can make. Why should I have to wait 10 years like you did? Hey, Matthew. Uh, let, let it go, Ben. No, Daddy, I can't let him disrespect you like that. Ah, he didn't know what he was saying. The boy's just excited. Hey, I'm gonna call Weitzman. Wait, did you hear that? That's the sound of me making money. cha <laughs> I'm telling you, you can do the whole Zulu War in three pages. The Zulu War lasted 10 years. Well, in the book, it feels longer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hear me out. Remove these pages, and Wahunthra's rise will be more compelling to the reader. Honestly, they feel gratuitous. As if you've written them to show you've done the research. <laughs> you think you're so smart. Well, usually I don't even think about it, but at times like these, I amaze even myself. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but it wasn't always like this. No, no, I have been humbled in the past. Yes, long, long ago. <laughs> I should show you the first manuscript I ever edited. Okay. It's a mess. Whoa, whoa. Uh, okay. Ben, is it even up there? No, actually, it's at home, but I just love doing this. <laughs> Come on, give it a try. No, I'm happy on the ground. Tony, please, you're gonna love this. Oh, Ben. Come All on. Right. Okay, okay. All right. One time. All right. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, back. This is fun. I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Come on, I'll help you down. Oh, mister, I don't know if you're strong enough to handle I can handle it. Right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> ben, you can let go of me. I don't want to. Look, I can't. I gotta go. Tony? Tony! Something troubling you, son? Is there something you want to tell Daddy? <laughs> well, there's this woman. There always is. <laughs> Actually, it's the author of your new favorite book, Tony. Yeah, uh, we were editing last night. We were working, she was on a ladder, we kissed, she ran out. Uh -huh. I've tried her at the hotel, but she won't take my calls. Dad, do you think I crossed the line here? I have no idea. I'm still trying to figure out the ladder. <laughs> Don't you have some advice for me? Some story to make me feel better? Nope. You got nothing for me? You see, we never had this kind of conflict down the barber shop. You don't get too cuddly with a man when you're cutting his nose hair. Hey, morning, Grandpa. Morning, Dad. Good morning, Matthew. Hey, look, it's the Idle Rich. You know, market opens in an hour. Last chance to get on the ground floor of Eyeball. No, thank you. I'm going to take my veggies home. Stop at the hardware store. Maybe get myself a ladder. <laughs> Grandpa hit the farmer's market again, huh? Yeah. You know, I don't get why he goes all the way downtown to save a few bucks. A few bucks means a lot to your grandfather. It means a lot to me. You have any idea how much it costs to be in the Maddie Stevenson business? No, not really. All right. Let's see. Bulls t-shirt and sweats, that's $25. <laughs> There's the robe, that's $30. <laughs> What's that on your sleeve? Grape jelly? Uh-huh. Boom! 175 for laundry detergent. <laughs> and we gotta have fabric softener because we only want the smoothest against his baby soft skin. <laughs> Ooh, and let's not forget all those candy eyeballs we've been eating. Yes, that's right, my brother. Cha-ching! $75 visit to the dentist. Okay, okay, Dad, I get it. Something this good don't come cheap. <laughs> yeah, so you see what I'm saying? Morning, Angela. 
boss? Have you heard about the therapeutic value of St. John's wort? It might help you from sliding into a depression. What depression? You don't know. Never mind. Got me? <laughs> Carl. Uh-oh. This is not good. Last time I walked in on something like this was after Alex tried to get us tax-exempt status as Our Lady of the Home Court Press. Hey, we were publishing that pop-up Bible. I thought we qualified. Ben, Tony pulled the book. She happened to mention why? She said for personal reasons. Alex asked me to come and look over the contracts, which of course are now useless, but you're still paying me. <laughs> Now, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> you and Tony worked late last night in the conference room. Alone. <laughs> Judas! <laughs> okay, okay, we were editing and we kissed once, that's it. But after that lecture that you gave me, <laughs> let me just say, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. That's right, page seven of our pop-up book. <laughs> Excuse me. But the photographer's here to check out the space for the book cover shoot tomorrow. Uh, I'll deal with the photographer. You, you just, you sit there and you think about what you've done. Carl, how could I have kissed her? I mean, it was totally unprofessional. Hey, you're being too hard on yourself, Ben. Man and a woman, alone together, working late. It happens. Not to me. <laughs> but it happens. Why doesn't it happen to me, Ben? Carl, please! <laughs> You know, this may not be about crossing a professional line. This might be about something bigger, literally bigger. You mean her weight? If you recall, Benjamin, there was a time I wasn't as sure of myself as I am now. Remember in high school? I used to be heavy. <laughs> now I'm substantial. <laughs> I know she has issues about her size, but the thing is, I don't. And she knows I'm attracted to her. Well, that's enough for you. It may not be enough for her. Now, look, Ben, uh, you remember when I was dating this girl, Patricia Larson, in senior year. We broke up just before the prom. Yeah. She didn't want a boyfriend when she was going off to college. That's what I told you. What I didn't tell anybody was what her best friend told me. She didn't want to take her prom pictures with a guy who was fat. Oh, Carl. Sorry, man. No, you see, what I'm saying is, you go through that enough times, it makes it hard to trust people. Well, I'm glad you told me. At least now I understand. Yeah. Then again, Tony could think you're just a sleazy publisher trying to get a little bit. <laughs> I can only hope. <laughs> she thinks she's picking up her plane tickets from Angela, so when she comes in, I don't want her to see me and run out. Well, no problem. We'll just, we'll sit you at the bar. Well, uh, no good. Uh, how am I going to see her if I'm sitting at the bar? Okay, all right then. Um, how about on the mezzanine by the railing? You call this a mezzanine? Okay, how about on the part that's higher? Well, if she spots me, she'll be out the door before I can run down the stairs. Fine. Uh. Then why don't we just put you at your regular table and I'll get you a big net. Nicole, that's ridiculous. How are you going to get a big net on such short notice? All right, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm sitting. Oh, ben, relax. You'll be fine. I take it Angela's not bringing me my plane tickets. Thank you. Tony, will you sit with me for a moment? Thank you. I just want to apologize for last night. What happened was completely unprofessional. I have never, ever kissed an author before, except for Richard Simmons, who kissed me. He was excited because we considered publishing his deal a meal calendar. Look, Ben, the, the truth is it's not a professional thing. What is it? Ben, men who look like you are not attracted to women who look like me. And you seem to be the only one who doesn't get it. Well, you're right. I don't get it. I am attracted to you. And I'm attracted to you, but it's just too scary for me. Look, I'm scared too. 
But since I met you, I am willing to push my fears aside and trust what I'm feeling. And I hope that you can too. You know, if something is to happen between us, we'd have to go very, very slow. Is that slow enough for you? You really are a wonderful kisser. Well, you just play up to the level of your opponent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know if anybody's ever mentioned this to you, but uh, you're a little underweight. Well, can't you see past it? I mean, there's an overweight person inside me fighting to get out, <laughs> screaming to get out. In fact, menus, please. <laughs> Fine looking woman. Mm. You gonna see her again? Yeah, yeah, she's uh, flying back in a few months. We've got a little business to take care of. We might even talk about her book. <laughs> hey, Dad. Hey, Grandpa. Hey, man. Well, Matthew, I guess congratulations are in order. What for? Your eyeball stock went right through the roof. You got good instinct. Too bad I didn't invest. You didn't? You didn't? <sighs> nah. You know, I was thinking $500 isn't exactly chump change. You got to cut a lot of head to hair to make that kind of money, huh, Grandpa? That's very true, Matthew. Yeah, I decided to leave my money where it is. My broker, Weissman, said it has growth potential. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Matthew, very few boys would be so responsible. So, I'm going to add another $50 to your portfolio. Really? I'm sure you'll spend it wisely. We are running a bit low on post-its. Another good one, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. Ah, you're welcome. Another fifty dollars? What'd you do? Hit the number? I had a hot tip on candy eyeball. <laughs> you played the market? You? Tell me about it. I was a nervous wreck watching my money go up and down. I couldn't take my eyes off that ticker all night. Daddy, it doesn't change during the night. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> About 3 a.m. 